Hello, good evening and welcome guys. And visible, give me a quick nod. <coughs> is the AV quality clear? Everything is good. Just give me a quick nod so that we are on same page and we can begin with our today's session. I believe it is not yet gone live, is it? Yeah. Is the AV quality clear, guys? All right. Okay, so welcome back guys to another session in Anesthesia. I am your host, your mentor, your educator, your friend, Dr. Hitesh Nathani. And today we'll be discussing one of the very important topics when it comes to anesthesia, when it comes to your medicine, when it comes to your emergency medicine, when it comes to you being a doctor, that is CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, right? Last time when we were discussing the MCQs with regards to the ER, that is emergency room, scenarios and all those things CPR was one of the forefront things that we were discussing right in terms of MCQ discussion that time you gave me a feedback sir let us have a session on CPR because CPR is one of those topics in anesthesia which is asked all the time I am telling you again all the time in exams and which you have to master it all right so I believe everybody is here so let us straight away dive into the today's session and yes guys an academy dream big for 2023 there is a discount of 23 percent for the year 23 which is going on so any subscription that you take any subscription you will get 23 percent off right from 10 percent it has jumped up to 23 percent you can use the code dr hitesh for that and there is a beautiful thing which has come up that is live as well as recorded session right need pg vitals so you'll be getting all the recorded batches along with this live thing, right? So phase one, already there are like 12 subjects live. In phase two, there will be three more subjects. And in phase three, there will be two more subjects. So almost 18 subjects will be live by next month, right? So yes, anesthesia also will be live from February. So looking forward for your feedback when it comes to that. And this is your January 2, 2023, which we have launched. High yield image based and previous years questions whenever you ask me what is to be done in the last moment these are the two things that you have to know right image based and previous years questions are a must all right so as i can see in the comment section everybody is here hi samira saad elsa kabana so we are going to be discussing and we are going to be starting with cpr right so first of all guys tell me why do we have to study cpr what is the need for us to study CPR, right? And what will happen? Where will it be useful for us when we are what we are studying CPR, right? Not just with CPR. Whenever we are talking about any of such topics, right? Be it in terms of our preparation, be it in terms of the subject, you have to know why, right? This why is gonna give you a lot of your answers. You can even find your purpose if you answer that. So first, tell me, guys, in the comment section. Why do we have to study CPR and what will happen when we study CPR? Hmm? <clears throat> what is going to happen when we study CPR today? We will get good marks, right? First of all, CPR is a basic thing that we all as a medico should know because we are going to encounter a lot of situations, right? So I am going to be throwing off such situations on you right now and you have to answer me, right? Suppose you are present at a party or you are there in a mall doing shopping. You are present at a ground having some fun games, playing around. You are walking down by the side of the road. You are there and you see a building on fire or you see a person drowning, right? And suddenly in all these scenarios, you see somebody has collapsed, right? In a party, some uncle ji or auntie ji has collapsed. Right in a mall, you see some random person X Y Z has collapsed on the ground. While playing cricket or while playing football on the ground, you see some of your friend might have collapsed. Right on the road, you must have experienced or seen a road traffic accident has happened. 
so what will you do under such situations right what will you do under such situations any guesses yes saad elsa and revati says by learning cpr will be able to save lives yes of course you will be able to save lives because of that but tell me when you encounter such situations most of you must have already encountered such situations right what will you do in such situations what will be your reaction yes whenever we encounter such situations in our life yes our reaction should not be run away from there is whenever there is a fire we should not run away our response has to be how do i save and how do i lead in that situation right so running away or from the situation is never your option right how do we save yes what happens during that time yes so first response has to be seen safety is what sad is saying right monica says we will check for pulse right so guys these are all the scenarios that we see these are your emergency scenarios right whenever there is this emergency which happens you have to act quick right and to act quick it has to be your spinal reflex it doesn't have to be like okay let me think now what can be done let me see what can happen yes let me like google it out what can be done in this no it has to be quick so therefore cpr is one of the most important topics when it comes to anesthesia when it comes to emergency medicine anywhere right so what are the things which are included in cpr and why this 2050 guidelines are so 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 important right so you see guys before 2015 whenever this emergency situation used to be there whenever we encountered a collapsed patient right the situation was we used to encounter it with a b c a stands for airway b stands for breath and c stands for chest compressions right so that time we used to start cpr in abc sequence right but is it valid now no after 2015 now the correct sequence is c a b right now what is c a b how is the sequence everything we'll discuss but first let us discuss cpr and what exactly cpr stands for right cpr stands for cardio pulmonary resuscitation cardio pulmonary resuscitation right but nowadays what do we call it we call it cpcr cardio pulmonary cerebral resuscitation so now they also know that cerebrum that is your brain is also an important organ so they have included that also and because of that the guidelines of cpr is also changed after 2015 till here everybody is clear so what exactly are the pillars of cpr guys the first important pillar is basic life support right second is advanced cardiac life support and third one is post cardiac arrest care so cpr whenever we talk talk about cpr whenever we talk about cpr right we are going to discuss cpr under these three headings first is basic life support bls second is advanced cardiac life support third is post cardiac arrest care post cardiac arrest care all right so all the situations that i have given you previously right what were those situations they were outside hospital cardiac arrest right beat on the road right beat in the mall right beat by the side of a yes playing ground right beat in the fire building right so whenever we encountered such situations in our life what was the thing and how do we like react to these situations right whenever there is such kind of emergency what are we supposed to do first yes what is the first thing to be done whenever there is such situation first thing to be done in such situations is seen safety right whenever there is a fire whenever there is a road traffic accident whenever there is a drowning incident whenever somebody has collapsed first thing to be done is scene safety right sir yes monica first thing to be done is scene safety scene safety for whom scene safety for the victim as well as for the rescuer right scene safety for victim as well as for the rescuer so first thing to be done in any emergency scenario is scene safety clear what will be the next thing that we have to do second thing yes after scene safety what are we going to do next 
anybody after scene safety second thing is you have to yes you have to call for help call for help right second and third thing are most of the times interchangeable as well not to worry with that third thing yes check for response yes check for response now you will say sometimes this is the second one and second one is the third one right first we have to check for response and then call for help it is okay it is okay not to worry about that right first scene safety you can tell somebody till the time you can call for help and you are immediately checking for response this happens simultaneously right so it is okay at that time so you can check for response call for help or call for help check for response it is okay all right then how will you check for response how will you check for response we will tap on the patient shoulder or victim shoulder hello uncle ji are you able to hear me yes hello uncle ji are you able to hear me tap on the cheeks yes if you know the name you can shout out the name kunj are you able to hear me right like that okay kunj okay so yes this is how you will check for response of the patient right and last in all these scenarios that we see is we have to check for pulse and breath of that patient check for pulse and breath of that patient right so whenever we encounter any situation where the person has collapsed first thing is scene safety scene safety for victim for the rescuer second we will call for help or we will check for response and call for help and last is we will check for pulse and breath where which pulse will we check guys which pulse will we check yes we will check for exactly correct sir we will check for carotid pulse and also breath and what is the time duration for that it should be done within 10 seconds right it should be done within 10 seconds so far everybody is clear yes so when we are checking for pulse and breath we will encounter three scenarios right we will encounter three scenarios first one can be the patient is having pulse rate present and the breath is also present right pulse and breath both are present the patient just collapsed or patient just fainted right this can be the first scenario second scenario can be patient has got pulse present but breath is agonal or breath is gasping right and what is the third scenario third scenario mein pulse is absent breath is also absent patient is not breathing the pulse is also not felt right so these are the three scenarios which can happen whenever we are encountering a patient of collapse victim right so whenever pulse and breath both are present what we will do till the time the emergency response teams arrive or till the time the ambulance arrives if we have called ambulance we will observe the patient we will observe the patient we will just check the patient whether the patient is still maintaining everything fine or not right if pulse is present and breath is absent so what we will do we will give the patient assisted breath we will give the patient assisted breaths right but when there is no pulse when there is no breathing present what are we going to do we are going to start with cpr right we are going to start with cpr clear so far yes and what are the steps for cpr yes first is your basic life support right first is your basic life support and what is included in your basic life support we have just said it is c a b c a b right so basic life support is the first pillar of cpr which includes three steps chest compressions airway and breath in the same order so shall we look into the details of everything now yahan tak everybody is clear just give me a quick nod in the comment section so that we all are present on the same page <coughs> basic life support yes revti kunj priya everybody yes first we will have to give chest compressions right kun first will be chest compressions always so let us look into the same thing right so this was a outside hospital cardiac arrest 
we have already seen so this is how we will proceed with chest compressions airway and breath let us look into the each and every aspect individually right these are the three things that we have discussed right we will verify scene safety responsiveness of the patient call for help right and three types of situation that we will encounter normal breath and pulse we will just observe the patient no breath we will give assisted breath and whenever there is gasping breath we will start with cpr right whenever there is gasping breath we will start with cpr so first thing in cpr that we said it is basic life support right or we will start with cpr ka basic things right so what is the first thing in that it was c right c stands for chest c stands for chest compressions what do we mean by chest compression it is compressing on the chest as simple as that right so that means we will thump on the chest we will compress the chest to mimic our cardiac cycle to mimic the systole and diastole to maintain the circulation right so that is the reason why we are giving chest compressions to the patient okay so what is the rate at which we have to give chest compressions right my heart is beating at 60 beats per minute right somebody's heart is beating at 100 beats per minute right so what is the rate at which we have to give chest compressions to the patient right patient has collapsed we have already seen the scenarios right we have seen patient is not responsive right immediately you have called for help you check pulse is not there breath is not there you have to start with chest compressions what is the rate at which you will start or you will just keep on randomly pressing upon the chest exactly correct yes kun monica dr rain it is 30 is to 2 is chest compression is to ventilation we'll come to that as well all right yes 100 exactly correct rain priya yes it is 100 to 120 compressions per minute right 100 to 120 chest compressions per minute right that means it should not be less than 100 and it should not be more than 120 it should be in the range of 100 to 120 per minute all right so far clear yes now suppose the individual who collapsed he was a 60 year old man right in that we are giving chest compressions at 100 to 120 per minute but if it was a 8 year old child yes what would be your rate of chest compressions children may what is the heart rate or how will you give chest compressions anybody suppose the victim whom we encountered yes he is a 8 year old child yes what would be your case chest compression rate monica says priya says same exactly correct so it is going to be same as 100 to 120 per minute whether be it neonate right 30 days old child right even if you encounter a child or a neonate infant right who is in the 30 days 20 days 6 months that time also your rate will be same so chest compression rate is universal all throughout it is 100 to 120 per minute right it does not go to 90 it does not go to 140 150 compressions it is same 100 to 120 per minute right second thing that we have to see for is depth how deep will you press or what is the depth of chest compression that you will give right it is usually in the range of 2 to 3 inches in adults that is around 5 to 6 cm in adults right in children it is around 2 inches that is around 5 cm and in children it is less than that is around 4 to 5 cm but for infants and children the best answer should be One third of the AP diameter of the chest. What should be a chest compressions? One third of the AP diameter of the chest, right? So that should be the depth of chest compression. That means what? When I am keeping my hands and starting for chest compression, I should press inside for five to six centimeters and come out, right? I should press for five to six centimeters and come out. I should not be leaning on the chest. and in infants or in children it is 1/3 of the ap diameter of the chest okay clear all right so this is the depth what about hand placement yes where will we place our hands and how will we give chest compressions we should know that as well hai na if we do not know where are we supposed to place our hand so we will not be actually mimicking the cardiac output right suppose we are keeping the hand here on the chest here on the chest somewhere here in the axilla will it have 
be of any use absolutely not right hand placement how it is in adults you take one hand you interlace the fingers of the other hand like this right and with the palm of your other hand you start giving chest compressions like this right and from where am i giving chest compression the thrust is coming from the shoulders it is not coming from the elbows right so this is how i have interlaced the fingers into the palm of my other hand and from the palm of my other hand i am giving chest compressions like this so it is 5 cm in 6 cm in and out in and out right so this is 100 to 120 times per minute i am doing right where should be my hand placement in the center of the chest particularly the lower half right above the zip sternum in the lower half of the sternum that is where i am keeping my hand and i am giving the chest compressions from where the thrust is coming it is coming from shoulders not from my elbows it is not like this it is like this from the shoulders all right clear so we know the chest compression rate we know the depth now hand placement also we know in adults but what happens in children yes what happens in children where do we have to keep hand placement see in children you can keep the hand in the center of the chest with your two fingers or with the ulnar aspect of your hand like this right this can be the hand placement in children also in infants you can give it with the help of thumb and in infants you can give it with the help of two fingers as well right thumb means you are encircling the thumb holding it like a bucket i think and like this you are giving chest compressions with the thumb right again it is at the center of the chest at the level of nipple right and in adults this is how your hand placement is clear so far everyone any doubts just keep on asking any queries if you have right this is a very important topic that we are discussing so that when we discuss the mcqs on the same topics next time you will be able to answer such questions so far everybody is clear so hand placement in adults like this as it is shown in the center of the chest lower half of the sternum hand placement in children it can be by two thumb method or finger method or with the ulnar aspect of the hand right so this is the hand placement right for after every chest compression yes you should not start the second you should allow for the chest to completely recoil one and two and three and four this is how we go about right we do not go one two three four five six seven and keep on compressing 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 no because whenever you allow for the chest to recoil the next cycle of blood goes inside and then you can pump it out right it is same as your diastole and systole that we are mimicking clear yes 8 to 9 year old you will place either two hands or one hand right like the ulnar aspect of the hands are all right and when it is infants you can use two fingers or a thumb technique theek hai so you should allow for the full recoil of the chest after each compression theek hai and whenever you are giving chest compressions whenever you want to change the positions you have to do it in less than 10 seconds right any interruption in cpr while giving cpr should be less than 10 seconds so far everybody is clear any doubts so c a b right so what we have seen so far a patient has collapsed we have seen a patient has collapsed right so what did we do we checked for scene safety right second we called for help right third we check the response of the patient right and this can be interchangeable i have already told you right fourth one yes fourth one is we will check for pulse and breath of the patient we will check for pulse and breath of the patient now we know that the patient is not breathing patient is not responding what we will do we will start with cpr in first pillar of cpr is what basic life support in that what are the three things that we have to take care of chest compressions airway breath chest compression first thing what is the rate 100 to 120 per minute right what is the depth of chest compression 5 to 6 cm in adults or 2 to 2.5 in chest in adults 2 in chest that is around 5 cm in children and 1/3 of the ap diameter in infants right so depth of chest compression done hand placement it is with the palm of the hand that we have seen center of the chest in adults with single hand in children and with two fingers or with thumb in infants right okay then allow for the complete chest recoil 
allow for the chest to completely recoil and interruption should be less than 10 seconds so far everybody is there with me on the same page any doubts now we are moving on to the second aspect that is airway right we are moving on to the second aspect that is airway what is the reason for us to maintain airway just so that the patency is maintained what do i mean by patency of the airway right whenever a patient collapses right whenever a patient collapses the muscles relax right and particularly when the muscles of the upper part of your airway relaxes what happens what happens during this time this part of the tongue right this part of the tongue which is there it will fall down onto the lower half right it will fall down onto the lower half so what will happen because of that it will cause upper airway obstruction right it will cause upper airway obstruction right so in order to relieve that obstruction what do we do we perform certain maneuvers these are known as airway maneuvers right upper airway obstruction in order to relieve this upper airway obstruction right so what do we do we perform certain maneuvers so what happens the air can be passed easily right to maintain the patency of the airway now what are the maneuvers first thing is chin lift first thing is chin lift that means we are lifting the chin of the patient like this right second maneuver is head tilt right second maneuver is head tilt third is jaw thrust so these are the three maneuvers which will help us in maintaining the patency of the airway chin lift head tilt and jaw thrust these are the three maneuvers which are used to perform and maintain the patency of the airway right so when we do this what happens the lower part of the tongue which was obstructing by falling onto the posterior pharyngeal wall is now opened up and the patient can be ventilated right patient can now be ventilated very easily clear yes so chest compression airway right now let us come to breath how do we give the breath in basic life support remember guys we are still talking about basic life support how will we give the breath in basic life support it is mouth to mouth breath as we can see here right it is mouth to mouth breath because you don't have any equipments right now right patient is still lying down on the road patient is still in the mall it is not yet in the hospital we are talking about outside hospital cardiac arrest right now right it is basic life support you do not have anything you are just present with your bare hands and with your mind and with your persona there right so it is mouth to mouth breath so what is the rate or what is the frequency at which you will give mouth to mouth breath yes in adults we will give 8 to 12 breaths per minute right in adults we will give 8 to 12 breaths per minute right but what happens in children yes we can give 16 to 20 breaths per minute in children mostly the recent guideline says we give 20 breaths per minute that accounts to one breath every three seconds right this was the recent update it is one breath every three seconds that we have to give to children or infants all right so guys when we are giving mouth to mouth breath that is eight breaths per minute right and what was the chest compressions chest compression rate kitna tha? what was the rate of chest compressions it was 120 per minute right and what is the breath that we are giving we are giving around eight breaths per minute to the patient mouth to mouth breath right so what is the chest compression is to ventilation ratio let us do that 120 divided by 8 right if we just divide it by 4 also right it comes to around 30 is to 2 right so therefore that ratio is come cv ratio is nothing but 30 is to 2 in adults right clear so far compression is to ventilation ratio is 30 is to 2 right everybody of us must have mugged it up but this is the reason how that chest compression is to ventilation ratio has come it is 30 is to 2 clear everybody yes <coughs> so let us 
have a quick recap of whatever we have done so far you encounter a patient who has collapsed right you encounter a patient who has collapsed right what will you do first yes what will you do first we will check for scene safety first we will check for scene safety second we will check for responsiveness this is deliberately i am writing responsiveness here though you will say that in first and second time you have written responsiveness as second deliberately i am writing here as responsiveness right third we will call for help we will call for help right and fourth what we will do we will call for help and we will check for pulse rate and we will check for breath of the patient particularly the carotid pulse right now we know that the patient is not responsive right we know that the patient is not responsive what we will do now we will start with cpr right since we are present in a mall do we have anything in our hand nothing we are just present with our bare hands and with our mouth and everything with our <coughs> intellect so what we'll do we'll start with cpr what are the three steps or three pillars of cpr basic life support advanced cardiac life support and post cardiac arrest care here what we will do we will start with basic life support basic life support what are the three things in basic life support chest compressions airway and breath right chest compressions airway and breath so what is the rate of chest compression guys tell me it is 100 to 120 per minute right what is the depth of chest compressions 5 to 6 cm or 2 2.5 in in adult around 5 cm in children and 1/3 of the ap diameter in infants right so rate depth what about hand placement two hands fingerly interlaced with the palm of hand in the center of the chest in adults with ulnar respect of your hand in children and either with two fingers or with your thumb in infants right hand placement depth and then comes your allow for the chest to complete recoil right recoil of the chest right and you should interrupt the chest compressions for not more than 10 seconds right 10 seconds is your limitation of interruption right next we will maintain the airway how will maintain the airways three maneuvers next we will maintain the airways how will maintain the airway three maneuvers chin lift head tilt and jaw thrust right these are the three maneuvers that we will perform chin lift head tilt and jaw thrust jaw thrust from the angle of the mandible you will try and thrust it out this is how the jaw thrust happen why we have to maintain the patency of the airway so that to relieve upper airway obstruction right breath how will go about with breath we will give mouth to mouth breath yes what is the rate 8 to 12 breaths per minute in adults and in children it is around 20 breath per minute that is one breath every 3 seconds right what is the cv ratio it is 30 is to 2 cv ratio is 30 is to 2 right when one rescuer is present when two rescuers is present in adults in children we will come to that how did we come to that as well right we'll discuss that as well now right so look at the cv ratio chest compression is to ventilation ratio it is 30 is to 2 in adults right but the same rate if we are giving mouth to mouth breath suppose we are giving 8 to 16 breath per minute in child right and you are alone present yes only revati is present there right no one else is present so what will she she do she'll go she'll give chest compressions then will come to the head and she'll give mouth to mouth breaths again she will come again she will start with chest compressions again she'll go to the mouth she'll give to mouth to mouth breath within 10 seconds right within 10 seconds so when she is present alone right when she is present alone yes suppose this is a adult patient right and this is a child who has collapsed right we have two scenarios now revati is present alone there one rescuer is only present right so what is the cv ratio it is 30 is to 2 in adults right and what about child in children also it is same 30 is to 2 right but when revati is present along with elsa there right revati and elsa both are present now there are two rescuers who are present at the site right so what will first rescuer do they will do chest compressions the second rescuer can give mouth to mouth breath but in adults whether one rescuer is present or two rescuers are present the chest compression is to ventilation ratio is same that is 30 is to 2 
right but remember what was the breadth it which we gave to the children it was 16 to 20 breaths per minute right so the ventilation clearly doubled from 8 to it doubled 20 uh, 16 right so once you divide 120 by 16 the chest compression is to ventilation ratio comes to 30 is to 4 or 15 is to 2 right clear so whenever two rescuers are present that means Revati and Elsa both are present in children your chest compression is to ventilation ratio becomes 15 is to 2 as opposed to 30 is to 2 when only one person is present is it clear guys is it clear yes Saad wonderful yes so Dr. Ramani is asking sir should we continue even if the ribs are fractured or if any rib fracture case what should be the protocol right so now Ramani I'll just tell you like this right a patient is there who has collapsed right he is not breathing he is not responding to your commands and there is no breath or no pulse that is present right you start with chest compressions and suddenly you see a crackle sound and the rib is fractured right so what is more important fracture rib is more important or saving the life of the patient is more important here right saving the life of the patient is more important rib fracture can be taken care of later right so which is more important saving the life of the patient is more important therefore you will continue CPR irrespective of rib fracture no matter what all right yes so Putin says it is a crystal clear wonderful so this is your chest compression is to ventilation ratio right so this is a brief intro a first part of CPR that we have taken care of today guys I hope you guys have got a clarity of how to approach a patient with CPR this was the basics that we have discussed today right basic life support in our second part what we'll be doing we'll be discussing with advanced cardiac life support and post cardiac arrest care of the patient right how will we take care once the patient is revived what is the reason for the patient to first instance to go into cardiac arrest or collapse everything will take care, take care of that in that all right so i hope you guys enjoyed today's session yes revati ramani putin monica elsa saad yes cpr is the basics clear now we have touched upon with a scenario to a patient and now as a medico you should be well equipped whenever you see an unconscious patient how will you approach that patient right Sir, flail chest management, that is all together a different topic, we'll come to that as well, right? Trauma guidelines, we will see in that. Tomorrow, no, most probably Putin, we won't be having tomorrow YouTube, we will be having a special class tomorrow, right? So if you want, we can continue with CPR in the special class, so we will be able to take conduct quizzes also there, MCQs, right? Thank you Revati for joining in, thank you Elsa, thank you Saad, yes, I hope you guys enjoyed, thank you for that yes thank you dr ramani so i hope you guys had fun in today's session so we will be meeting again tomorrow most probably we'll be having a special class the updates will be shared you can follow me on the unacademy app you can follow the unacademy channel here and that you will start receiving notifications whenever we are coming up with next sessions all right so until we meet again this is your host your mentor your friend your educator dr hitesh signing off for the day guys bye bye Take care, stay blessed, stay disciplined and stay motivated guys. Bye-bye.